Are centipedes dangerous to people? Today I'm gonna hold a centipede in my bare hand and find out. But first, we have to find one. The centipede's domain is the forest floor, which means my search takes me out into the woods where I'll be scouring the leaf litter and rotting logs, hoping to find a fearsome many-legged predator. Full disclosure, there's not a lot of things out here that actually give me the creeps, but centipedes are one of them. Here's the thing. I have, uh, I've never actually held a centipede before. And it's because, frankly, they creep me out. So today, it's not just about me showing you whether or not centipedes are aggressive or dangerous to people. This is about me getting outside my comfort zone, getting up close and personal with one of the animals that freaks me out the most so I can confront my fear and show myself that centipedes are nothing to be afraid of. The centipede isn't just a creepy crawly. No, it doesn't just crawl. It charges across the landscape. Dozens of hooked legs packed with muscle, rhythmically flexing as this fierce predator stalks its prey. Its sweeping antennae probe the leaf litter, picking up chemical trails, and perhaps the crown jewel of the centipede's arsenal are its formidable venom claws. The fat, modified legs that sit right beside its head, which act as hollow syringes that chew venom into prey, and anyone unwise enough to pick one of these guys up without caution. The centipede truly is a creature out of my worst nightmare, and somewhere out here, underneath cover, lies the individual centipede that is gonna help me break that fear. This area here is like my centipede spot. Between all the bricks, boards, and logs, the odds of finding a centipede are super, super high. It's just a matter of flipping the right object at the right time. With every log and brick that I flip, my heart is racing. I'm anticipating seeing one of these red squiggly animals sprinting for cover. While we're out here, we'll see plenty of other creatures underneath and on top of these bricks and logs, just like the soil centipede. This is a distant cousin of our target bark centipede, but these longer, sluggish versions of our fierce predator are much more delicate. They're certainly fascinating to watch as they curl and walk over their own coils, but these are absolutely no threat to me. We're after a bark centipede, so we're gonna keep looking. Centipede! It's a bark centipede, he's making a break for it. Oh, no digging, no digging, no digging. Oh, don't go in there, don't go in there, don't go in there. Yep, 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 get him in there, get him in there, get him in there, get him in there. Come here, come here, come here. Yes, 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 yes. And got him. This is by no means the largest bark centipede I've ever seen, but it's still big enough to give me the heebie-jeebies, so I think it's time to punch fear in the face and freehandle this creepy creature. As I go to freehandle this incredible creature, there is one important detail I need to keep in mind. For the centipede, the price of being an incredibly efficient subterranean killing machine means that too much exposure can be deadly. You're likely familiar with the fact that amphibians can dry out and die if they're handled for too long. But this goes double for the centipede. Unlike insects and arachnids, centipedes don't have a waxy cuticle that helps them to retain moisture. In fact, they're much more like crustaceans than other terrestrial arthropods. This is good news for me, because even though I am nervous, for the safety of the centipede, this free handling segment will need to be fairly short. Now, for the moment of truth. Time to open the jar and freehandle a bark centipede. It took me a split second to register that the centipede was actually on my hand. It was so light that I can actually barely feel it. I thought cupping the jar on it would get it to calm down and stay on my palm, but immediately the creature started exploring, looking for a way out and back down into the soil. As it walked across my skin, I could feel its tiny hook-like legs gripping onto my hair. Aside from the fact that there were quite a few legs, it didn't feel all that different from having various insects and spiders walk on me. In fact, I actually had to fight to keep the centipede from jumping off onto the ground below. It's as if the centipede understands that I'm much more of a threat to this animal than it is to me. This animal's number one goal is far from stand and fight, but actually to get back to the comforts of the moist, dark soil where it spends most of its time. Now I knew that the bark centipedes in my area are not medically dangerous to me. This is entirely a test to see how aggressive these animals are when being free handled. And as you can see, the results speak for themselves. My fears were completely and utterly irrational. And as I watch this marvelous creature walk over my arm, I feel a newfound respect for the centipedes that call my backyard home. In fact, all in all, this encounter was much less nerve-wracking 
than an encounter I had last summer with a velvet ant, only a few meters from where this encounter actually took place. If you want to see that video, click on the link right here. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.